we're back. And now for the news. So first up on docket. Uh, I just want to say big up to Microsoft. Okay. And first up on the docket is Newsweek. Story by John Jackson. Hugh Grant's awkward red carpet interview divides viewers. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here with that shit. All right, let's let's go through it. <laughs> divides viewers. You, you see, this is what I'm talking about. You gotta be kidding me. With these two stupid motherfuckers. Uh, Hugh Grant. Wait a minute. And Ashley Graham. And when I mean that, I mean that, I mean that in the sense of that, that it's not that they are that. I mean that of what we're dealing here with. We're dealing with news, right? And why did I pick this? So why did you pick that if you don't like it? It's not about me not liking it or liking it. It's about talking about it. It's very important to, for the public to start understanding that pe- things get solved. I don't care what kind of problem. This is the absolute fact and all absolution of factual exacta of the universe. And that is this, that anything can be solved if you talk about it, not dwell on it, not regurgitate, not have a rabbit hole conversation, a uh, human, adult, intelligible, okay? intelligible <laughs> conversation about something. Guess what? Even you, you don't have to sit there and dwell and say, we have to think about a solution. Just talk about it with somebody that's going to um, reciprocate to you in such a manner that you may even change your thoughts on the idea uh, towards elevation or towards some kind of process of solution. You know what I'm saying? One conversation. Guess what? It's the truth. Uh, even having a trauma. Uh, all right, maybe a few conversations. <laughs> but still, it, it happens. Why do you think those people get paid so much? Okay. Anyway, sorry. I always get into it. But anyway. Uh, and, and like, again, I said, when I say that, I mean in the level of what's important of... of this is a stupid ass crap baby story. Somebody got got weird with somebody during a time of people celebrating entertainment. <laughs> I'm an entertainer. Not that big of a deal. Yeah, to us personally. But where do you draw the line in thinking? You know, so, oh, this is my moment. This is the, this is what has to be taking, like, this is why entertainment is like the way it is. And this is why real artisan are sick of it. Are sick of this shit, you know? But why am I doing it? Because it has to be, we have to talk about it. All right, now, now let's, go ahead, go on. <laughs> Model Ashley Graham. A uh, pre-show interview with actor Hugh Grant at Sunday's 95th Academy Awards resulted in a large, <coughs> excuse me, and divided reaction from viewers. Hugh Grant's red champagne, whatever carpet, in interview on ABC just now was so cringe. He was so nasty. If he if he's so unimpressed. Why bother stopping to talk or even go at all? I'd say that it could be maybe that somebody is really, like, messed up in life or whatever, right? People are like, oh, dead. and they, they, they probably have a lot of chaos following you, dangerous, right? They could be any type of person in any type of life, career, whatever, right? And let's say they're in this, and then, the, uh, you know, Hugh Grant sees this person. He's like, oh, God, this person is such a right? And, and, and then all of a sudden he sees that 
He sees Ashley Graham. Oh, hi, how you doing? Kiss him on the cheek, or whatever. Or maybe not. Oh, oh, whatever. Whatever, you know? That could be something that happened. Or or um, maybe he was walking next to her prior. You know, could have been an hour or so, whatever. And she made a joke about something. And he was like, truly taken back by it. We don't know. I'm, am I sticking up for him? No, no. Mr. Mickey, remember what was that HBO special? I mean, not say HBO special. The uh, the movie, right? Um, I guess I say that because I didn't see it in the movies. It was old. Um, uh, oh, man, if I could just remember the guy's name. But he was in a movie. It was like a a weird mob comedy, and the guy he. He's an English guy who falls in love with the girl, and the father is James Caan. <laughs> I think it's James Caan or, or or somebody like that from the the you know um, Jesus Christ the mafia the mafia movie. Um, and he was like uh, the Godfather. He was like um, oh, he said some things to him, and he. There's this one silly part. It's like he tries to, you know, mix up, you know, with the mix-up. You know what I mean? Like people do. It doesn't matter where you're from. It happens all over. It's from, it's old. It's it's all over the world, and it's been been done. So the guy, uh, you know, Hugh Grant, he's, he he tries to, you know, be one of the, <laughs> one of the guys. Yeah? One of the good boys. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he tries to say, hey, forget about it. He's like, forget about it. I love that shit, that Irish accent. Hey, forget about it. Ah, I'll fuck you up. Nah. <laughs> Ow. See, the Irish spirit just got me. My ankle. Jesus Christ. It's like, oh, you want to make fun? Ow. I'm going to die. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. My God. I got no. Anyway. Oh, um, whatever. Uh, what do I think of this story? It's but. <laughs> now, personally, I'm going to say this. I don't know what, what's wrong with Hugh Grant. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I have experienced in my life seeing somebody that I think, holy Lord, this woman is gorgeous. And then... All of a sudden, you know, maybe, like, uh, all of a sudden I hear that person say something like, oh, these effing homeless people, right? I don't care what she looks like, how much money she has, who she is, or what's her job, what she's doing, why I'm there. I don't care about my, my, not to put myself in it. Uh, if the person, like, you know, a job or something, if the person had to come up to me and say hi to me every day or... I had to be that person. I'd be like, okay, yeah, whatever. But no. Uh, And no, I wouldn't, you know, I'd probably be pasty or like dead or like, you know, like that. You know, and that person would probably be maybe more creeped out by that. But I wouldn't be mean or give a person a nasty look just because. But maybe, I don't know, maybe I'd give them a look like, ah, I can't believe you, you know. And maybe that's wrong too, or whatever, or judging. But hey, it's the way I am, you know. If I heard the per, if I heard the person say something like, "Um, they don't like a certain group of people," again, I'd be like, "What? The fuck is wrong with you? What the?" But I wouldn't say nothing. I'd just be like, "All right, whatever," you know. So it's like anything like that. Or if they said, "Uh, you know, they would talk about being mean to children," or uh, uh you know. Any of those things. You know, why would you want to be around anybody like that? That means that any of that any of those things are happening that are your friends, that person will treat that like that. And you don't you understand that? Yeah. Uh I don't think uh it was supposed to be like this <laughs> this show, but it it's happening that way, so whatever. See? Uh, sorry, Hugh Grant and uh Ashley Graham. 
I'm not trying to ridicule the both of you, but it's like you're two big babies. Like, big fucking deal. Who cares if you guys are mad at each other for whatever you're at the... Obviously, if this can probably... Um, say that what if what if um, Hugh Grant was very sweet to Ashley Graham now why I don't understand and I don't think I don't I don't know I don't think I you know Ashley Graham maybe I don't know a beautiful lady Sweet, she looks sweet. I know, I know how to be sweet to somebody. They be, you know, not everybody's like that though. But uh, yes, I've had people that I was very, very nice to, and they were like shitty to me. And maybe, maybe a lot of times, um, you could be in a situation where you're a girl or a guy, and you, 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 you meet somebody. It doesn't matter, girl or guy, and you do that thing. You be like sweet to people, and people get. Paranoid, like they, you want to date them. I can't stand scary motherfuckers like that. That those are other people you don't want in your life. I have friends like that that I'm like, oh hey, and I'm sweet, and I say, and they're like, oh, oh, what, oh, oh, and they, they get scared, or they send me like a, you know, uh, um, uh, I don't know, whatever. And I think they're fucking retarded. <laughs> I don't care what they say. Oh, I don't care what they think. But um, you 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 gotta you know not waste your time. Uh, let's say for argument's sake that that is what happened. Let's say that Hugh Grant walked up to her and was very sweet to her, and let's say she got freaked out. Now, guess what? Both things are human. Even though what's happening here is human, but it's still a little bit. You know, come on. This is like what happens with children. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You looked at me this way. I knew what you were thinking. Boy. Oh, boy. So, I don't know. I look at her. I, you know, I could imagine that a man could be hurt in their heart. Because it could ha- happen to me. She's a beautiful woman, doesn't see me, doesn't like it. And all of a sudden, you're like, hey, how's it going? That's it. That's all you're saying. You, you, you know, you have that look, like that Chinese smile eye or that Irish, you know, squinty eye smile. You know, you're like, hey, it's sweet, sweet look. And the person gets so offended, like, and they kind of, like, become, um, you know, like, turned off or free or whatever. And then you're, like, freaked out. Everybody gets so freaked out also because it feels horrible when someone acts like there's something wrong with you. you know, especially, you know, uh, uh, besides any kind of thought that maybe a person would be scared because, um, how do you say, uh, they feel like a danger or whatever, but that's their own mind. You know, if someone's really dangerous, then, then yeah, that's the, the person that's not good. But if someone's not dangerous and you and a person, it doesn't matter, guy or girl, looks at another person, right? And goes, Oh, they're not a they're not really attractive to me, so or they're not that attractive, so I'm gonna treat them weirdly so they leave me alone. And they weren't even trying to flirt with you, you stupid fuck. (laughs) That's the only thing right there that, you know, if that happened. But who knows? Maybe it's not. Maybe, maybe these two had a moment. And after that moment, maybe someone was found out for something. And then that person was told something, and now maybe let's say what's what's happening here isn't uh, not uh, maybe uh, Hugh Grant is being immature and and going oh I didn't like the the response or something and I feel you know whatever and so maybe he he's acting like that you never know 
Uh, I do feel some weird stuff here, like, you know. Um, anyway, forget about the story. And let's get back to the intro of today, right? Uh, also, I forgot the, uh, ephemeris, ephemeris. Today is, it's different when you got one in paper. March 13th, I said it already, but I'm, I'm just saying that because I'm looking at this ephemeris. March 13th, I see it. I see it, I see it. I got this little thing on, it's really cool. Um... March 13th. Uh, this thing goes up really. Oh, there it is. March 13th. See, you, oh, one thing about it, if, you, if you're looking at it, you got to go to the top constantly. So you got moon, I mean, you got sun, the day, sun, moon, plus 12 hours. True. Uh, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. And so forth, right? The rest of the planets. All right, so we're looking at March 13th. This is the ephemeris. Monday. <sighs> the sun is in Pisces. Um, or, yeah, Pisces. The moon uh, went from the beginning of the month from Cancer to Leo to Virgo to um, Libra to Scorpio, right? And we're transitioning. That's today. We're transitioning for tomorrow. The, m the moon would be um, 11 degrees, in Sagittarius. The sun is 23 degrees in Pisces. Um, that's it. I, I, I wasn't going to do the full one, but, you know. So, uh, but, uh, oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's in, it's, you know, you do your, do your prayers. <laughs> anyway, just wanted to say that. So. Um, I am hoping for some special event. Keep your eye out. Performing, performing, you know? Um, be really cool again to, you know, get out there. Um, you know, and just, you know, do this, do this already. I love this. I love it. I love this thing. You know, uh, it's not necessarily one thing. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyway. Um, next on deck. Uh, in between time, you might hear some uh, stuff that, you know, on the radio they say, oh, you, 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 you took seven seconds. You know, like, <laughs> I was reaching for my coffee. I got this little table, right, next to me, and I forgot to move it over. I had moved it just a little bit to fixing something. I forgot to move, so now I'm like, oh, be right back. <laughs> I have to go across the studio, my, my arm, stretch arm, strong arm, and get the, my, my cup of water. I'm dying. <laughs> Ah, Jesus. So, what's next? From the Associated Press, written by Wayne Perry. How coconuts protect the Jersey Shore, others eroding coasts. Hmm? Hmm? You know what I want to say, the first thing that comes to mind? The Orisha, you know, whatever you learned... 
if you're a person who has uh, studied. Oh, uh, see, I don't have to tell you. Coconuts, you know, spiritual. Especially the most toxic state. <laughs> oh, boy, that jersey. Dirty jers. That state means uh, more about something you wear. <laughs> I mean, uh, Jesus Christ, that title that I just said is a song of something you know, talking about your, you know, your person. But, uh, um, you know, uh, yes, we joked. I used to call, uh, call it, I used to drive a cab, and when I'd say, um, when I'd be coming into the town from, like, let's say, uh, maybe dropping somebody up off at the airport or, um, you know, whatever, man, the city, whatever, right? I'd say coming into the toxic jungle. <laughs> and then one time there was this, uh, oh, well, it has this uh, chemical plant in the town, you know? And it's 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 dangerous, okay? <laughs> I remember, yeah, that, that that's what it was. The first time I was, I said that, I was in there, and I couldn't find the area they wanted me to go to to pick the person up. I kept getting lost. It's like a maze in there. And I said, I'm lost in the toxic jungle. <laughs> and they were like, what? Where are you? Car 23? What a number. Anyway. I've driven for many cab companies. Oh, boy. So... Let's see what this is. I thought that's, that's not such a bad story, right? This is a good thing. Beautiful. Jersey. My God. N not even just toxic, but like, you know, karmic stuff. You know what I mean? Oof. The sand. You could tell that, that, that it's not natural because if you look at the land, the sand looks uh, kind of bolden at the at the uh, break or uh, at, the, at the, you know, where the land comes in, um, and it looks like there's brand new sand there. <laughs> it's got put there like a long time ago, and it's got spread out. Oh, you know why? That sand turns a uh, weird colors and gray and dark. Anyway, Neptune, New Jersey. Coastal communities around the world are adding a tropical twist to shoreline protection, courtesy of the humble coconut. That's right. You know? Uh, coconut is for healing. Coconut is to break, break, you know, break holds. Loose your hold, Satan! Ah. <laughs> From the sands of the Jersey Shore to the islands of Indonesia, strands of coconut husk known as coir are being incorporated into shoreline protection projects. Well, of course, she it. You didn't think they were going to give up the the coconut juice and the coconut meat. <laughs> Hell no. It got me hungry now. <laughs> I just think, you know, I've been cooking with coconut oil. That's why I'm like, oh, nice eggy sandwich. Nah. But anyway, so <laughs> I love this. Um, often used in conjunction with other measures, the coconut material is seen as a cost-effective, readily available, and sustainable option. Now, something just flagged, right? Not not the writer, intentionally, but something behind it, right? This is where the writers will appreciate this, maybe. I feel like an energy, I feel like something is, like, saying that... And I know people are, all right, you don't have to complain about everything, but I will say, like... I feel like somebody's getting ripped off here. <laughs> the coconut people. I don't know if they're like the. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of supposed to, on those things, include a little bit of the, you know, the shell and the meat. But I don't know how they're doing it. Just the, you know, just the strands. It has to be a little bit more than that, you know. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not giving the strands enough credit. Because it's very powerful. See, I'm wrong. I, I just I just realized I'm wrong. Often, oh yeah, we read that. <laughs> um, 
One such project is being installed along the section of Eroded Riverbank in Neptune, New Jersey, about a mile from the ocean of the Shark River. You don't say. I wonder why. <laughs> Using a mix of federal grant and local funds, the American... Littoral Society, a coastal conservation group, is carrying out $1.3 million project that has already added significantly to what was previously a severely eroded shoreline in an area that was pummeled by Superstorm Sandy in 2012. Uh, what are you going to do? Hail the coconut. I would say it's all safe to say hail, m hail the issue. Hail my issue. <laughs> That's so cute. Uh, so, yeah. You know, my fetifun issue. I like this story. It ended in the, in the, in the, in the uplifting. Of one of the Orisha, the firstborn. Um, this is awesome. This is a great. You know what, Wayne Perry, you're my dude. Yeah. Very good. That's weird. This is not supposed to happen. We're supposed to complain about the news on ACBN Morning Bulletin. But it's okay because see, this is called progression or or what is it when you elevate in society you know what i mean this is it all right so whatever whatever that's good now uh college times by i a uh, story by isaac john riyadh air Close to 35 billion Boeing deal. Why did I say it like that? Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, PIF, P I F, is close to a deal in order Boeing commercial jets for the fleet of a new national airline. Rayid Air has reported. Big shout out and props to. Rai, oh, I uh, said it wrong. Riyadh, Riyadh Air. Congratulations, Riyadh Air, for being able to move thirty-five billion. Congratulations, it's beautiful. I'm being serious. I know, I'm not, I know it's funny, but uh, hey, if you made it in life and you did something like that, hey, you deserve a congratulations. Uh, I got to give the props to. I, I'm not a hater. I don't hate just because it's a corporation. Yeah, it's not, eh, you know. But, but it, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's a, it's a air vehicle and it gets you places. Sometimes you got to get places fast. You got to make a deal. Maybe you could help somebody. Maybe you could save somebody, you know. I'm, Sorry, I have to be that way in this sense. Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Prime Minister Mohammed bin Salman announced on Sunday the establishment of Riyadh Air, a wholly owned company by the PIF, Public Investment Fund. Oof. And you know, <laughs> kind of proves some things about the money. I wonder, I wonder, uh, I just thought of England. I don't know why. I don't, I don't want to get into it. Riyadh will be the company's operational hub and will connect Saudi capital to over 100 destinations globally by 2030, making the use of Kingdom's location between Asia, Africa, and Europe, state news agency SPA said. Hey. <laughs> Why? Ah, because I saw the thirty-five billion. Thirty-five billion. 
I wish I had ten dollars for a pizza. <laughs> Stuffed. I don't know. I I I think that's beautiful. You know, and that's what the story is. So I want to say, well, if I had thirty five, that's not what the story is. They're using their money to, you know, create this. You know, and it looks like a regular American plane. But what's that mean? Nothing. It's it looks normal. It's a you know like a white and blue. It says Boeing on it. It doesn't even say. Um, unless it, Bo- Boeing is its own company and they own it, then I'd say that's big. Or I know, duh. Like, okay, so Boeing, right? Oh, well, see, there you go. Boeing is huge, first of all. Boeing is the first Boeing. It's a Boeing. But Boeing, the name of the company, is, is, is huge. So, holy crap. Saudi Arabia bought the entire thing. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry for the delay, people. I'm, I'm a human being. <laughs> so, anyway. That's... There you go. Pretty good. I don't know if it'll be owned by an American ever. And I don't think they're going to sell it for $35 billion. <laughs> Just... Uh, um, I guess spent that, whatever, whatever, right? Wow, thirty-five billion. Pretty nice, pretty nice. I oh, love no, happy story, you know. Anyway, so I don't think the next story is so happy. It's a little weird too, because it's very short. But we're gonna talk about it. Uh, oh. I should have seen it. Son of a... No wonder! Fox News. Story by Pilar... I Again, Pilar? Pilar Arias. Oh, boy. I'm going to have to have a talk with this Pilar. I think Pilar is a girl's name. <laughs> okay, I'll talk very nice. Gentle. Elderly Nebraska couple found dead two months after going missing. Well, holy shit. Um, Nebraska is a beautiful country. Delicious food. I mean, uh, uh, delicious food as in delicious produce. I mean, you know, fruit and vegetables. I don't mean about anything like a restaurant or anything. But, I mean, that's what I, I was told. I was never in Nebraska, but I heard this, you know. An elderly Nebraska couple reported missing two months ago has been found dead, authorities say. Robert Proctor, 89, and his wife, Lavetta, 92, of Aurora, were last seen on surveillance video in Hastings on January 12th. KFXL TV reports. (coughs) Both Aurora Police Department and Buffalo City, a uh, Buffalo County Sheriff's Office announced Saturday afternoon the two were located dead and foul play is not su- suspected. <laughs> Listen, this is a short story. Take it easy. You're going to fucking be found out. Around 3.15 p.m., deputies were contacted by a citizen who found a vehicle stuck hmm, on a minimum maintenance road. Deputies quickly identified the vehicle as the Proctor's vehicle. Two adults were located dead in the area of the scene. Autopsies have been ordered by Buffalo County Attorney's Office. The investigation is ongoing and includes a Buffalo County Sheriff's Office, Aurora Police Department, and Kearney Police Department. Additional information will be forthcoming as it becomes available. A press release reads, Well, holy shit. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see if I could uh, pinpoint something, right? Because, you you know, they want to make this story so quick and fast. Uh, put out a story. Tell them this. And tell them there's no foul play involved. <laughs> oh, my God. Is somebody dumb? 
<laughs> I mean, first of all, I, no. I probably don't think that Pilar Arias is dumb. I don't think they write dumb. I think Fox News probably forced Pilar to write this story. <laughs> That's the first thing. And um, because you know why? It's it's just information here that, like, okay. Why did you put the information out? Oh, because you didn't want somebody digging? Let's put this here so they go with it, and it'll leave it alone. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. It sounds like somebody killed somebody, and somebody really important and an official is involved, and they said, you know what? They're going to come looking for these people. And they said, no, don't put, a, don't put any press out. They're going to find us. We got to do something. Why? Because they're going to come looking for them. We don't want them to, to, to investigate. Yeah, but if we do, then they're going to... Re- no, don't worry. It's all dumb. What the hell is wrong with people? A, 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 a elderly couple being killed is a huge... Um, wait a minute. W- listen, listen, listen. Listen, this is an elderly couple from Nebraska. Hello? Reported two, reported missing two months ago. Has been found dead, authorities say. Listen, listen. Robert Proctor, 89. His wife, Lavetta, 92, Aurora were last seen in a surveillance video in Hastings. On January, KFXL TV reports, both Aurora Police Department and Buffalo County Sheriff's Office announced Saturday afternoon the two were located dead. And foul play is not suspected. <laughs> you know, listen, I'm going to tell you something. The way the person said, uh, and foul play is not suspected. That's so fucking, like, sounds guilty. There's <laughs> a person who's very rich that they were told to, to, they were told, we want you, we want you to make this story happen like this. And they were like, all right. That's it. That's exactly what I feel. So sorry that you know. You, oh, you have to have proof. But we're just talking about you know. Uh, part of this, you know, uh, as many may th- see me, I have left or not left, but kind of like, you know, just got kind of bored of the, uh, you know, uh, the hocus pocus community. Um, you get you know, bored, so. But I'm st- I am still spiritual, and I am intuitive, and I will absolutely point something out that's fishy, like this Fox News story. No, um, no pointing at Pilar, even though she's the writer. Or, yeah, I don't I don't know if Pilar is a a a, a, a by gender uh, name in the Spanish speaking countries but anyway uh, I don't think that this person wrote this like I think this person gets paid to write that's all but anyway we know what happened we know what happened oh boy I am glad when I could get through all this you know and uh, man so there you go. Be happy, people. That is your full bulletin for this morning at Awareness Careless Broadcasting Network. We are aware of the carelessness brought to you all over the world. We are aware, and we are there. Who are we? We're right along with the carelessness. We're the awareness. You know, we are there with it in your cities, in your backyards, in your homes, in your schools, in your everywhere. And we could see it, and we know what? We're going to talk about it. we say, hey, this is not right. You know why? Because we're sick of... The, the, 
you know, whatever in this country, you know, you know, you just um, uh, you get tired of seeing things that are not supposed to be. You know? All right, here we go. Here we go, people. Uh. from the movement One day I return Step into the shadows To say hi to the world And share a secret with you I hope you Uh, that is Renee Collins. The kingdoms within you, you just can't see. Tuning in to ACBN American Radio. And stay-